In this question, the electric vehicle has two different portions of its motion. In the first portion, it's starting from rest and accelerating at a rate of 2 meters per second squared until it reaches a speed of 20 meters per second. Then, during the next portion of its motion, it slows down at a constant rate of 1 meters per second squared until it stops. So because there are two separate motions in this problem, it's going to be useful for us to divide the problem into two parts. So in part one, we're going to list all of the known values, and we've color-coded it so that green represents the first part and blue the second part. Now, again, the vehicle starts from rest. So for the green portion of the journey, we can say that its initial velocity is zero meters per second. And then it accelerates at two meters per second squared. until it reaches a final speed, and we can call this velocity as well because it's just moving in a straight line of 20 meters per second. And since part A asks us for the elapsed time, it's going to be useful for us to figure out the time that it, it was taking the electric vehicle to reach that final velocity of 20. So we have to pick one of our equations from kinematics. We've listed them on the right-hand side here you'll notice that we don't really want the displacement right now, so any equation involving displacement can be discarded. So for example, this equation has displacement in it, so we can cross that off. Same thing with this equation, and this equation, and this one. So really that leaves us with the top equation, so why don't we go ahead and write it down here. And we're going to solve this for the time. So what we'll do is subtract the initial velocity from both sides of the equation. Oops. So now we have v minus v naught equals at, and then to solve for time, we'll divide both sides by the acceleration. And so we can see that the time will equal the, basically the change in velocity over the acceleration. So we can plug in the known values that we listed above. We have 20 meters per second minus 0 meters per second, and then divide that by the acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. And when we work this out, we can see that the time will come out to 10 seconds. So we can go back now and note that the time is 10 seconds for that green portion of the journey. Let's now look at the blue portion, the second half. And in this case, the vehicle slows down at a constant rate. Now, because it's slowing down but still traveling to the right, the acceleration actually will be pointing to the left. So in other words, the acceleration is now negative 1 meters per second squared. Notice that the initial velocity for the second part will be the final velocity of the first part. So whatever the final velocity of the first part of the problem will carry over and become the initial velocity of the second part. So we're going to say the initial velocity is 20 meters per second. Because it's coming to a stop, we know the final velocity is 0 meters per second. And again, we're going to calculate the time. So we're going to use the same equation that we derived earlier. So t equals final minus initial velocities over acceleration. We'll plug in the known values here. So we have 0 meters per second minus 20 meters per second over negative 1 meters per second squared. And in this case, you'll get a time value of 20 seconds. So we can now put that in as a known value. Now, of course, part A wants the total time. So we will simply add these two times together, the 10 seconds plus the 20 seconds. And therefore, the total time after adding these together will be, of course, 30 seconds. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. For part B, we are asked to determine basically the displacement that the vehicle travels from start to stop. So what we're going to have to do is figure out the displacement for each section of the journey and then add those together to get the overall displacement. So why don't we clean up our workspace just a little bit here, and then we're going to pick an equation from our list that would help us get the displacement. There would be more than one option at this point, but perhaps the easiest one to use will be this one right here. So let's try that for the green portion. Now x minus x naught, you can condense that into just delta x. That would be the overall symbol for the displacement. It's the initial velocity times the time plus one half acceleration times squared. 
So we will plug in everything we know. The initial velocity was zero, the time was 10, plus one half times the acceleration, which was two, and then again times the time, which was 10, and then don't forget to square it. So when you work this out, you're going to get a displacement of 100 meters. So that would be for the green portion of the journey. And now over to the blue portion, we'll try the same equation here. So the displacement equals the initial velocity, which was 20, times the time, which is also 20, plus 1 half times the acceleration, which is negative 1, and then times the time squared. So let's work this out. And when we do so, we get 200 meters for the displacement during the blue portion of the journey. Now, because the vehicle was traveling in a simple straight line, it wasn't stopping and turning around or anything like that, we can get the total displacement from start to stop by adding these two displacements together. So it's going to be 100 meters plus the 200 meters which of course gives us 300 meters. So this would be the correct answer to part B.